Good morning, everybody. Let's stand together. We're going to worship Jesus this morning in this place. Let's sing about his amazing grace.
morning, Jesus. We worship you, God.
We're so thankful that we can surrender our lives into your hands, Jesus. Lord Jesus. And I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. I meant empty praise and treasures that fade. I'm never enough. came along and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love I say oh there's nothing I know there's nothing better than you there's
love singing those words, especially today on Thanksgiving Sunday. Colossians 3.15. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are all called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom that he gives and sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do, whatever you say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Giving thanks to him through God the Father. God, we give you thanks this morning. We thank you that you are the only one who can, that you can bring dead things and make them alive. Father God, I pray that we would just honor you with our lives. We give thanks to you, Jesus. We give you all honor, all glory, all praise today in this place. God, we thank you with our whole hearts and our whole lives. Some days it's hard. But God, we give you praise and we give you thanks for who you are. I pray that that would never stop. It would not just be one day a year where we say what we're thankful for, but every day we would proclaim your greatness, God, your goodness and faithfulness in our lives. So Jesus, I pray that you'd be over each and every one of us here in this place that we would continue to lift you high in our families, in our homes, in any situation that we are in. We would lift your name high. Be over us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Say hello to someone or say I'm thankful for you as you make your way to your seat. Well, welcome this morning. Hello online. We're so glad that you're here with us. If you're new, there's a connect card in the seat in front of you. You can take a moment and fill that out. And you can hand it in at the info center. And we'll make sure that you get a free drink in our coffee cafe, however we call it, coffee shop. You can have a fancy drink over there. But we would love for you to fill out that connect card. This morning, we've got our kids in the room for worship. Woohoo! Yes. I know some parents are excited about that. Some are like, oh my goodness, really? They're with me for four songs? We got this, okay? We got this. We're going to get through. But before I dismiss kids, kids, I have something very special this morning. We get to do two baby dedications. And you get to see that, and we're so excited. So I'm going to call up. Adam and Madison Bose and baby Oliver, just make your way to the stage. Can we give them all a clap as they come forward? And Aaron and Kelly, Adrian, big brother Adrian, and Eliana. We're so excited to do this this morning. Yeah, come on, keep going. Let's cheer for these families. Come on up. And they're awake. No baby is wow. sleeping. Look at I, you made it. The family is coordinated this morning. I you love look, it. You look so good. You look great. <laughs> adorable, adorable. So we're so excited to do this today. Listen, um, what a great day, right? I just think about Thanksgiving. Uh, not everybody, but many people uh, get together as a friend family or as family family. And today, to be able to do baby dedications is so exciting because we're the family of God. And we need to stand beside and around and comfort uh, this family, these two families, as they journey through the parenting stage. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't end, you know, like we get so excited nine months, well, oh, baby, baby, but then you got a parent, right? It doesn't end at the birth, it just begins. 
And so I want to talk to you this morning just briefly about baby dedications. The reason why we're so excited, again, as I said, uh, dedications are presenting these children to the Lord. They belong to God, right? They belong to God. And as a church, we want to commit to walk alongside these families. Scripture, it's a good thing to read. It says in Psalm uh, 127 that children are a heritage from the Lord. They're an offspring, a reward from him. Matthew 19, Jesus said, you may know it. Let the little children come to me. Don't hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Deuteronomy 6 says, these commandments that I give to you today are to be uh, on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Proverbs 26, 6 says, train up a child in the way they should go so that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Church, I don't have to tell you this, but family is tough. Family is difficult. Faith and family are both under attack in our, in our culture today. And it's important that we surround, that we embrace these milestone moments to stand with parents and children as they endeavor to walk in this life and endeavor to walk this life of faith in Christ. Listen, welcoming children is, is one of the greatest joys that we have. And as a church, we want to agree, we want to agree to help, to support, to lift up this part of the body of Christ. So today, church, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you with me? Here's my question to you. Will you commit? That's the first part of this question. Will you commit to praying for these families, encouraging them and supporting them on this parenting journey? You can say, it's like a wedding. You say, I do or I will, right? We will. Did you hear that, families? This church is standing beside you wanting to commit to walk with you each step of the way. So I get to introduce um, these lovely families to you. So we have sweet Oliver, Kaylin, Jeffrey, Bose. You can all, ooh, oh, he's so sweet. He was born May 13th, 2022 here in Kelowna. So five months, five months old, if I, my math is right. And Madison and Adam. So Adam plays bass on our worship team. Madison was baptized at our family camp a few years ago, and Madison, you are amazing. You have an incredible pregnancy story, actually, and I'm in awe of your strength. I'm in awe of you, um, and I look at Oliver today. It's a bit emotional, and I just see God's faithfulness in your lives. God has gifted you both with this beautiful baby boy, and he's such a gift. It's not been an easy journey. journey. Sleepless nights are hard. <laughs> And, uh, but God is writing a powerful story through your lives and is continuing on through Oliver. And so Oliver has two middle names that honor two amazing men in their lives. Kaylin, named after Adam and Madison's good friend that passed away last year. That's, that's beautiful. And Jeffrey, named after Madison's father. And I love, uh, they have amazing grandparents, right, that support and love and give lots of cuddles. And so... We're thankful for family, our church family and family to come around. And so, okay, this is the moment of truth. Oliver, how are you doing? <laughs> is this going to work? This is going to work. I'm a pro. Hey, oh, there you are. Look, you got to look at all these people over here. Careful, don't look at that one. That's, that guy's scary. Oh, yeah. No, they're nice over there. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Oh. Well, this morning, if you feel comfortable, would you just outstretch your arm as we pray over this young family, over Oliver. Hi, buddy. So, Jesus, we thank you for, for mom and dad. We thank you for little Oliver. God, I pray that you would have your hand upon this young man, 
that as he grows, Lord, that you would strengthen him. God, that you would turn him into a man of God after the things of God. Lord, we commit to standing around this family, to standing around Oliver and cheering him on as he runs this race. Lord, we we pray blessing over him in the name of Jesus. Everyone said, amen. Oh, my goodness. Look at He's so good. Oh, we're going to be buddies. I'm telling you. We're buddies. Oh, there's mom. There's dad. There you go. Give them a clap. Come on. Wow, the other side of the stage. Oh, we're going to be good. We're going to be good. I know. I love it. We've got, uh, oh, I left the gift bags down there. but We don't need to wait for the spiel. Like, oh, she wants well, to come I, for I me. Get to, oh, she's ready for okay. it. Okay. Oh, oh, you want to so, come? Eliana. This is Eliana Joy Stelb Wanamaker. Hi. Wanamaker. I love Hi. it. Hi. Born November 28th. Oh, look at her picture. Oh, superstar right here. 2021. So she's almost a year, guys. Wow. How? How did that happen? He's your little buddy. Oh, Go my ahead. goodness. And we have big brother Adrian looking sharp this morning, I might add. Hey, buddy. Right? Um, so this family is no stranger to you, church. I, uh, Kelly has blessed us with speaking on a Sunday women's event. She was playing keys this morning, if you didn't notice. She's a good friend to me. And... Uh, We've had them over to our home, and let me tell you, Aaron is the life of the party. He's fun, and we love this family. Um, Aaron, I also hear you make fantastic food, so we're coming over for Thanksgiving dinner, okay? And uh, now, do you do Canadian Thanksgiving or American? Because you're American. Both. Okay, so we're coming over for American Both, Thanksgiving course. as well. Of course. You get two and, turkeys. Yeah. You guys have been on quite the adventure over the last couple years, not even, I don't know, meeting in Europe, a marriage in a pandemic, um, moving here from pastoring in Paris, and to having a baby, so maybe slow down just a little bit, (laughs) and, uh, but we're so glad that you're in our lives. We love you guys, and um, Adrian, you are the sweetest boy, honestly. You're such a good big brother to your little sister. And so we love you guys, and uh, we can't wait to dedicate Whoa. this sweet baby girl. Listen, outstretch your hands. We're going to pray for Eliana and the family. Jesus, God, we thank you so much for leading and guiding and directing the footsteps of this family. Lord, we know that you will continue to bless them. Lord, we pray over Eliana, God, that as she grows, as she develops, as she learns, she learns that you are God and that we surrender our life, we surrender everything to you. So we pray this an incredible blessing upon her as she grows, as the milestones come, Lord, that you, uh, that you help and you come around and, you, and I know, Lord, that she's going to be a woman of God, a woman after the things of God. And so we thank you in Jesus' name for this beautiful family. Continue to bless them in Jesus' name. Oh, I just got to show you one more time. You are so chill. You're always chill like this, especially at 2 a.m. Always, always. Bless you guys. There's always uh, things to coordinate. Mike forgot their gifts, so they got their gifts now. We're good. We're good. Okay, kids, I need you to come all make your way to the front, okay? Because we're going to pray over you before we dismiss our class. So come sit down right at front. If you feel comfortable, grab a sibling, grab your grown-up maybe, grab your Bibles. Oh, so good. I see your Bibles. Come sit down. Come sit down. I hear them coming down the stairs. I love it. Yeah? Okay, we're, we're all good. We're going to sit down. You get to listen to three boring announcements, and I'll be quick. They're not boring. They're not boring. And so um, announcements. This week we have what's called our district conference, our PAOC district conference, and it's called Lead Forward this year. And it's October 12th and 13th, so Wednesday and Thursday. So what that means is all of the pastors 
and leaders around our POC district in BC, British Columbia, and the Yukon are going to be here. We, we get to be the host church this year, and we're so excited. A lot of times we have to go to Vancouver, but this time they're coming to Kelowna, and they're going to be in this space and around our building all week. And so we're really looking forward to that. And uh, I just want to let you know, church, that you are invited because we're the host church. We get to invite you out to this. I would say the best thing would be to come to the evening services at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night and Thursday night. And we have guest speakers that are going to be here. Pastor Brian and I are a part of the worship team. We're joining with churches again all over BC. There's child care. There are workshops and different things throughout the day. But be here for the 7 o'clock service. You will be blessed by the worship and speaking. And it will just be a fantastic time. So we encourage you to come to that. So we're all going to be a part of that. I'm excited. This is the first time that pastors and leaders in our POC district have gathered in over two years. We had to record it online last time. And so it's going to be amazing to have this place buzzing with pastors and leaders and going to different workshops and different things. And so we really encourage you to come to that. And the services are 7 o'clock in the evening this week. We have a town hall meeting October 16th right after the service to go over all of um, Constitution updates and whatnot. So we really encourage you to stick around for that. You do not have to be a member to be at that. And um, I'm trying to get through all the cuteness here. It's very hard. So town hall meeting, October 16th. And also that same Sunday, October 16th, we have Baptism Sunday. And so we are so excited to baptize people in water and just as they step out and declare their faith in Jesus. If you would like to be baptized, you can fill that in on the info or on the connect card. You can let them know at the info center. Email us throughout the week, and we would love to get you baptized and meet with you. So now, church, this is also our time that we ask for you to give. If you're a part of our church family, we ask for tithes and offerings, and we give back to Jesus. Hi. And we give back to him because he's blessed us so much, and we're thankful for all that he's done. And so you can give online. The ushers are at the back. There's lots of giving stations in the lobby. And you can come see us throughout the week. We would love to say hi. And um, you can also give in so many different ways. Okay, kids, you've been patient. We're going to pray, okay? So remember, what do we do? Can you stretch out your arms? And we're going to go five, four, three, two, one. We're going to close our eyes and pray for our tithes and offerings and for our kids' classes. God, we thank you so much for our beautiful kids. I pray a blessing over them today. We are so thankful for their lives, for each and every one of them. They're such a gift. And I, God, I pray that you'd be with us as we give this morning, as we honor you with our tithes and offerings. We're so blessed that we can bless others around us and be over the rest of the service today as our kids go off to class and as we stay here and just, God, open our hearts, touch our hearts today, and may we receive from you. We love you, Jesus. And everyone said, amen. So kids, we can stand up. Layton is standing right there. All of our amazing teachers, can we start walking over there? Look, there they are. They've got the tag on. They're so excited to take you to class. So let's start walking down. Have an awesome time. Can we just give them one more cheer as they head out to all of our kids? The Bible tells us to give thanks in everything. So how do we do that? Sure, it's easy to be thankful when life is going well. But what happens when the journey becomes difficult? How do we give thanks in the midst of pain, struggle, or loss? You see, life has a way of breaking a heart of gratitude, piece by piece, moment by moment, we lose sight of our calling to live thankful lives. This Thanksgiving, we need to be reminded of God's faithfulness. We need to stand on His promise to never leave us or forsake us. We need to trust the plans He has for us. 
plans to give us hope and a future. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, gratitude is inevitable. For he walks with us in the deepest valleys and on the highest mountains. Today, we place our trust in him alone. For this is where thankfulness overflows. Happy Thanksgiving! What? Come on! Let's wake up a little bit. You know, listen, I, uh, I'm holding the football because I'm thankful for football. You know, CFL has my heart, sort of, but yeah, come on. Come on, boys. BC Lions, where you at? It's Seattle. Seattle. I, you know, Seattle, um, they, uh, I, I've seen a couple games, and have you ever been there? It is unbelievable. So I am thankful, because when I think of Thanksgiving, I think of football. You know, uh, my Seattle team, they're playing today. Let's go, Seahawks. What are you thankful for, huh? What are you thankful for? You didn't see that coming, did you? What do you think? You've got to be thankful for something. Every day. All right, here we go. What are you thankful for? You're, oh, that's so sweet. I thought you were going to say McDonald's. Uh, what are you thankful for? Come on. Oh, kids. Listen, I could probably pass this ball around, and I'm going to get lots of things. I'm going to put you on the spot, but I'm going to get lots of things that you're thankful for. But we're not going to do that this morning. Why? Because I got a focus group together this week, and I said, come on, we got to do better than thankfulness on Thanksgiving, right? I mean, that's boring. We've done that before. We got to kick it into overdrive. So we sat together with our team, and we're like, what's going to be really good? Uh, what are we going to, like, get into for Thanksgiving? And uh, I began to, like, think and dream, and, and we came up with this, uh, this new title for the Thanksgiving message, and it goes like this. How to be ungrateful. I figured that would be a little bit more catchy than, you know, you need to be grateful. So I think it's genius because um, all this thankful talk, it's too hard. Right? It's too hard. Who needs to be thankful? Let's just be ungrateful. It's easier. Let's do you this Thanksgiving, people. Let's do you. Let's mix it up a bit. Let's play into our strengths, if you will. Hmm. Now, the first thing I would do if I was to be ungrateful would be make Thanksgiving all about me. I think that would be a great first step. So here's a few examples of how you make Thanksgiving all about yourself. When the turkey goes on the table, instantly reply, I thought it was going to be ham. That'll work really, really great. That'll kick off the ungrateful theme really well in your house. I'm just, I want to help you out. Or you can try this. Wow, this meal looks so great, but I'm so stuffed. I went to McDonald's on the way over here, and I was just hoping to sit in the living room and ignore everyone and the company coming over so I'd be on my cell phone for 90% of the time together. God bless. You see, making the day all about you is a great way to stay ungrateful. Now, the second way to stay ungrateful is this. Keep a long list of all the things others have done to you. It works really, really well. Like when the conversation gets going around the living room, remember to drop in a few passive-aggressive things. You know, maybe some digs about the money somebody in your family owes you or maybe a forgotten promise. Those especially work really well to be ungrateful. Listen, the ungrateful life doesn't come easy. Can I get an amen? It doesn't come easy. you got to put hard work into it. So number three, stay distracted, people. Stay distracted. In this world of social media, it's easy to forget to update often. It just is, right? So make sure you have your cell phone camera ready every moment. Don't put it down. If it didn't hit Instagram, did it really happen? You know? You with me? So take pictures every three to five minutes, and then in between those three to five minutes, continually upload. 
Just constantly uh, ignoring the important humans that you actually invited over. That'll just work really, really great. Don't let your guard down on this one, people. Social media is what makes life worth living. Stay distracted. Help people be jealous of all of the awesome social media life that you have. Mm. Now, if you follow these simple steps, all right, you're well on your way towards the ungrateful life. You're welcome, church. Now, obviously, that was the dumbest sermon I've ever preached in my life. I just had to get that out of my system, right? And if you caught yourself amening at any point in that little rant, uh, please see one of our pastoral staff. We'd love to pray for you, sir. (laughs) See, the truth of the matter is this. God does not want you to be ungrateful. It's quite the opposite. God wants you and I to be grateful, to be content, to be thankful. Now you can say amen. There you go. But this world we live in, it tends to breed in us this deep longing for more. I need more stuff. It's psychologically built into the system that we surround ourselves with. Think TV commercials. Okay, now, those of you who don't don't have on stream, you know, even streaming services are getting a little sneaky now, right? They're putting commercials in. But think of a TV commercial. They are aggressively designed to make you discontent with the products that you have. They seed this desire for like, oh, I want bigger. I want better. I want more stuff. Stuff more. Those of you who are under 35 understand what I'm talking about. Stuff Mart. See, products are designed today in such a way to fail. Now, I'm not living in this conspiracy land. They just are. Why is it that when my plan for my cell phone is up, my phone just seems to get a little boggy? You know? And then a commercial pops up. New iPhone 28. Where? How? How is this hap- happening? Clothing. Anything about clothing is designed for one purpose in mind. Fashion, not function, right? Just is. In this, we live in this world with like 52, and I've heard of uh, different stats on this, but there's 52 micro seasons. It's not four seasons, right? Fall, summer, winter, spring. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's 52 seasons. They're like these micro seasons for clothing. Need, like I need this has been replaced with a want. Like, like we, I want this, I want this, I want this. It's so easy to see why being grateful is so hard today. You can never have enough. You can never obtain the right status. And when you think you do, like I've made it to the top, the line moves. Ah, I bought that jacket just so I could be cool. And then the line moved, and now it's went from skinny jeans to large jeans. And then I went to large jeans to, like, bell bottoms. I can't keep up. Right when you think you've made it, the line changes. So let me shoot straight with you this morning. If you chase after the things of this world, listen up. It's like trying to be the king of a castle made out of sand, it will elude you and it will crumble. So what makes you satisfied? What makes you gratified? I want to read with you Psalm 103. we got Bibles in the pews. There's Bibles online for those of you tuning in. We're going to read all 22 verses. David writes this, and it's probably one of the best articulations of thankfulness we have in Scripture. And it reads like this. Are you with me? Good. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, all my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, all my soul. And forget not all his benefits. 
Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. Verse 8, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always excuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. Verse 10, he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it's gone. And its place remembers it no more, but from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and its righteousness with their children's children. Amen. With those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts, the Lord has established his throne in heaven. And his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord. You, his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Verse 21. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts. You, his servants who do his will. Verse 22. You made it. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I can just imagine David penning these words. Oh, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Would you remember? It starts out with that beautiful uh, line and it goes on over and over again. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. My soul is in gratitude to you, God. Praise the Lord for your lavish and Incredible mercies on my life. David tells his soul. Listen, praise the Lord. He does it six times. He does it in verse 2, verse, verse 1, verse 2, verse 20, verse 21, verse 22. And forget not all his benefits. Because David recognizes something within people that he's meeting. He goes, man, we forget really easily. We forget the things that happened to us. And in particular, we forget the fact that God's giving us life, that miracles are happening all of the time. We forget from moment to moment to moment. But David says, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Forget not all the benefits that you're bestowing upon your people. For more than half of the psalm, David stirs up his own heart, his own soul, Not to forget God's goodness and his benefits. You and I forget fast. So fast. We'll go from moment to moment and we'll forget what God's doing. And that's why often you go to conferences or churches, they say, take a journal and write it out. I hate writing out stuff in a journal. Some of you guys love it. Do it. But why is that push? Why is that push? Because we don't want to forget. God does incredible things, and sometimes you sit around going, God, where are you? Because you've forgotten his goodness. You've got forgotten his benefits. You and I forget fast. Cognitive psychologists refer, refer uh, to short-term memory. I thought short-term memory was actually like, you know, like 15 minutes or like, you know, uh, uh, maybe half an hour or something. It's 15 to 30 seconds. That's the defi- definition of short-term memory. 15 to 30 seconds. And this short-term ability is the cognitive ability we use the most. We just forget. We're like, 
oh yeah, here, can you remember this code for my door? It's only three numbers, you know, one, two, three. What was that number again? One, two, three, <laughs> come on. We forget, we're like squirrels. We're like, oh, what's this? We just forget. We have to remember, and I love how David says, don't forget, sing of his praises, remember his goodness. Don't forget all the benefits, oh soul. Don't forget. The original Hebrew word for forget, I just did a little digging around, and it actually means to lose memory of completely. Do not lose memory of the good things that God has done for you. Now, this is church. This is why we sing songs. This is why we worship together sometimes, to remember his goodness. We remember your love. We remember, oh, soul, to magnify, lift you high. This is why we share testimony, to remember his faithfulness, his goodness. This is why we fellowship. This is why we need mentorship. This is why we preach, to remember his goodness. Oh, soul, remember. Part of what makes up a person of thankfulness, of gratitude, is someone who doesn't forget the things of God. Get on your knees and say, Lord, help me remember and be grateful for what I have. Because if we just continually forget, we're just like a roller coaster. We're going up and down in our relationship with God. Remember, church, his goodness. Lift him high. Billy Graham, evangelist, passed away a few years ago. He wrote in one of his books, he said this. He said, the smallest package, Amazon package, you can think that. The smallest package I ever saw was a man wrapped up wholly in himself. Don't be fooled. God deserves the glory. Because what you have is from him. Secondly, A thankful heart rejoices. It rejoices. When you remember what God has done for you, the reaction should be to rejoice, to sing, to dance. You don't want to see me dancing, just saying. You ever been to a sporting event? Where's my football? You ever been to a a game? You ever ever been to a tailgate party? You ever showed up at at the uh, baseball diamond here and 2,000 people are screaming and yelling and excited eating their hot dogs? There's like this excitement, especially the Olympics. I love the Olympics. Don't you love it? Because there's something on the line. They win or they lose. These athletes have been working their entire lives for this one stage. There's There's electricity in the air. And when they score, when they win, there's an explosion of excitement. Right? You've been there. You've been there at that last game when it actually worked out and you look at each other and you go, I can't believe this day has come. There's a rejoicing. Think of that moment. The attitude in the crowd would be excitement. The attitude is celebratory. And when David recalls these words in Psalm, listen to this, verse 12. As far as... I just think about this. I think about this rejoicing that needs to come from my life. I think, why am I so kind of wah sometimes? When these words ring true, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he, God, removed our sin from us. Where's the rejoicing? Where's the excitement? Sometimes you come into church or fellowship with one another and like, now I get it. We need to encourage one another. Days can be tough. Things can be hard. But there's excitement and there's celebratory uh, uh, praise that needs to happen. Oh, God, would you give me a celebratory heart of praise that rejoices in all that God has done? Come on, I heard a whoop, a whoop. We got to rejoice. I have a friend. He was a a youth pastor of mine. And I got a, actually another friend. Sent me, a, sent me a text message, and on that text message was like this newspaper clipping with an exclamation mark. 
And let me tell you the story. So um, this, uh, this particular person, they, uh, they basically said, like, listen, I, I, I was with my family, and, uh, and it was my birthday. And uh, as this uh, family member had come and spent some time with them, essentially what happened is they left a little gift. And in that little gift basket, whatever, some grapes and things like that, there was a lotto ticket. You know, sometimes family members do that, little scratch and win ticket. And and so this particular guy, he put it on the shelf and was like, oh, cool, I'll come back to it later. And and, um, went about his business. And next day was like, oh, let's, let's have some of the chocolate and grapes and whatnot in the basket. Oh, here's the lotto ticket. So they scratched it off. What's coming? True story. They scratched it off, and they sat there in disbelief. This just happened in June. True story. They scratched it off, and they won $675,000. So I'm looking at this text message. Are you kidding me? Is this for real? Is this a joke? Sure enough, I went online. Yes. Yes. This young guy and his wife, brand newly married, just serving God as youth pastors. They get a, this incredible gift of $675,000 from an aunt who just came to visit. Come on, right? Those are kind of cool God moments. When you're like, how did that? I didn't see that. Listen, what would you do if that happened? Oh, wow, look at this. This is wonderful. Wow, I'm going to put that in an RSP. You know, like. Maybe a long-term savings bond. No, oh, you'd, you'd be ecstatic. If I got that, I'd probably pass out. You know, like, like, come on. Like, there would be an excitement. There would be electricity. You'd be yelling at your spouse, and they'd be like, calm down. The words don't get out properly. You're jumping. Most people have never seen you jump. You know, you're so excited. Like, what would you do? Right? You could just feel the electricity in the room of that happening. Now, how much more has God done for us? $675,000 is nothing in light of eternity. Do you know what I'm saying? And so often, we're just like, well, that's nice. Praise the Lord. And we just kind of go on. And, you know, God, would you light up our hearts in excitement for what you are doing? I am excited for what you are doing, God. Hmm. I don't know about you, but we got to wake up. Would you wake my soul up, Lord? When David writes these words in Psalms, as far as the east is from the west, like think you can never get there. It's a moving target. If you go west or you go east, you just keep moving, right? Like you never get there. As far as the east is from the west, as so far has he removed your sin, your transgressions, Which means, God, I am in debt. I am in awe. I am in praise. I need to rejoice because of what you have done. More so than a lotto ticket. Oh, God, you've given me so, so much. May I rejoice in you. You had no way to eternal life, and then Jesus came. You had no hope until Jesus came. You and I had nothing but the grace of Jesus that entered in and all things changed. The grace of God came through Jesus Christ. This open door. Now where's our thankfulness? Where's our gratitude? Third, a thankful heart is hope-filled. Hope-filled day to day. Day after day, I'm a hope-filled. 1 Peter 1 in verse 3 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Him. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We're hope-filled. Through Jesus, eternity is secure. How can we not show kindness and thankfulness to one another? The same kindness shown 
to us. Worship team, come on up. I'm going to read some more scripture to you. But I want you just to, even for a moment, close your eyes and listen to these scriptures. The first is found in Titus chapter 3. And maybe wherever you are, you would just close your eyes and let the word of God minister to you. Titus 3 says this, but when the kindness, when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Oh, may our souls rejoice. May we be filled with gratitude this season. Ephesians 4.32 it says, be kind and compassionate to one another, church. Would you forgive each other just as Christ, God, forgave you? Be kind, be compassionate for one another. This Thanksgiving, would we truly be thankful a posture and an attitude of heart that goes beyond me, 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 me. I need my needs met. I need my things. I, 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 God, would you, um, would you fix my stuff? Would you come to my knee, rescue, my needs? And God, we just sit in a posture of, God, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Would you bring to rem remembrance the things that you have done. Holy Spirit, sometimes we need to remember. Would you help our church to remember the good things that you've done for them? And today as we're sharing with one another, maybe this weekend, maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's at work this week, will we remember the good things that God has done and will we share our testimony of God's goodness so that they might see that they might see that our hope doesn't come in a new TV. It doesn't come in sports being won. It doesn't come in the things of this world, the bigger house, the boat, whatever it is. Our hope doesn't come in those things, but our hope comes in a Savior. His name is Jesus. Our hope comes in the form of miracles that you bestow upon our lives, God, to remind us of how good you actually are. Bring to memory all that you've done. I pray that today the church will be strengthened in the memory of what you have done and believe for the future that you have more in store. You got more coming. Maybe today you need to put your hands up. You need to be thankful. Lord, just in a posture of, of receiving or giving, First giving and then receiving. God, we give you praise. We give you praise for, for the things that you have done. And in the same breath, we just sit here in awe and wonder, saying, like, I wonder what's next. I wonder what's next. Because if I know your track record, God, I wonder what is next. Because you're good. Because you're right because you're perfect, because you're trustworthy, because you've done miracle after miracle. I'm going to stand on your promises, your goodness, and your grace. God, come. Come into my heart and make me a grateful, thankful person. I heard a, I heard a story of a professor who said to all of his students, a Bible college press professor, he said to all of his students, he said, okay, we're going to do an exercise. And so I want you to do this exercise. And he said, he said, uh, um, 
I want you to count up how much you're worth. <laughs> and everyone, what are you talking about? Like, I'm worth 10 million. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. Like, I want you to count up, like, how much did your shoes cost? And your pants, and your jacket, and your, sh- and your shirt, and your watch, and your, your Apple iPod thingies that are in your ear, and, you know, maybe your phone, like everything that's on your person right now. I want you to count up all the things that you have. And then he said, okay, if you're, if you're uh, worth $100, sit down. Nobody sat down. Okay, if you're worth uh, $500, you know, sit down. There was like one person who sat down. What? $700? And they went all the way up to like five, this is a Bible college uh, classroom, by the way. They went up to like $5,000. You know, and this kid's like, oh, you know, kind of embarrassed. <laughs> He's like, okay, you know, but just do that little exercise. Like, what's on your person? What's on yourself? What do you have? And sometimes we, you know, we get so ungrateful. And God's going like, like I've given you so much just on your person. Like, you, you are blessed to be a blessing, not a hoarder. Oh, God, would you help us? Would you help us? And it's not just in the, in the physical things. Who cares? It's about the spiritual things. God, you have given us new life through Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. And there's no greater gift. And I stand in awe of you. Our worship team is going to sing. And just as they sing, as, as we minister together, would you be a thankful person in light of a holy God? Let's stand up together.
sing in light of grateful hearts today that, God, you have bestowed upon us your grace and your love and your compassion. We thank you, Lord. We sing with all that is in us. Help us to be a grateful people, to, to be a thankful people, to be people that beg a gospel question, why are you so happy? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about the salvation that I have. I can't help but shout it from the rooftops. God, we thank you for our church. We thank you for the good that you're doing. We thank you for all the miracles that have been done. We praise you for what you're excited to do among us. Lord God, we thank you with all of our hearts. Listen, if you're here today and God's placed something on your heart and you need prayer, this is the place for you. You came to the right place. You came to church. We want to pray for you. You're going to see a team, prayer team. They're going to have lanyards like this. And they're always here at the close of our service. And they want to pray with you. Maybe you're starting a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you're just going through some stuff and you just need some extra support. That's what we're here for. I also want to encourage you that our connect cards, um, they're all around this place. Fill that out. Because on that is me.